Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Dr. Ruja B. Matic. I'm sitting in for Socrates. I feel I've internalized quite a bit of the essence of whom we consider Socrates. 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 Socrates to be perhaps the greatest philosopher who ever lived. And yet he was grotesque, uncomely. He didn't shave. He never washed his hair. His robe was often unlaundered. He let his hair grow into dreadlocks, you know. And he was barefooted most of the time. And uh, he didn't read or write, and yet he's known to be one of the greatest thinkers who've ever lived. We call him the father of democracy. And why? Because all told, the sum of his ideas stand for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And furthermore, the life of individuality, which is a very modern concept. And the idealism of the self to be as one as great of the god as great as one of the gods. And also happiness. happiness. He did believe there was sort of a bliss, bliss built, built into, into freedom. freedom. And by all means, freedom. And by freedom, he meant the exercise of free will. So I'll go over these a little bit at a time. First, to say of Socrates that every day he went into the square or the Parthenon where the people gathered and readily he spoke to strangers. Anyone who came in his pathway, he would greet them and meet them and talk to them and ask them certain questions. Oh, you believe in marriage. Well, why is that? And have them examine the whole issue of whether married or the state of marriage was happier than the single life and take them through the whole evolution of the idea until finally they came to terms with it and they were ready to commit to man making and woman making and indeed he put many people through Socratic dialogue which was the practice throughout democracy dialectical examination of both logos and intuition, and uh, the creation of what was called the epistemology of morals and ethics, which he participated in. And then furthermore, uh, Socrates was an eternalist. When he was condemned to death by a jury of 500 people who came from the city, to testify against him for having corrupted the youth and also for having worshipped one god and dispensed with many gods. Those were the charges against him in terms of democracy. He was claimed to have failed before the second phase of democracy, which came up Later, but he lived uh, right after Buddha passed away. So you see, Socrates holds a very key position in history where he issues in Christianity and the coming of Christ by he and Plato having invented Christianity in the year 480 B.C., he was born in 469. He married at the age of 40 to a 19-year-old girl who was his wife throughout life. 
And when she heard that he was going to take hemlock, which was the most dramatic thing that Socrates ever did, committed suicide in front of those 500 people, she fainted and within hours he was gone. And he said, I go to a better place. So you see, the whole disposition of democracy is founded on this self-examination of Socrates. Without self-discipline, we have no freedom. And furthermore, the principles of democracy and of who God is and everything resides within us. So though he believed in virtue, he said you have to find the virtues within yourself. He believed in the basic goodness of the human being and of his divine nature, which later I think Aristotle clarified as even being bodily, like Enoch who left the earth's surface full body into heaven, the first man ever to ascend into heaven besides Elijah and Jesus, is a testimony of eternalism. So eternalism, the belief in eternalism was very much at the foundation of democracy. So was self-discipline, so was self-perfecting. So was idealism, so was freedom, so was individuality, so was the exercise of choice and free will, so was the participation of the authentic person. Let us not forget that they very much believed that every man was a possible genius in his true and authentic self and that that should be supported in a democracy. And furthermore, being a team player of a sort to care about your brother man, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, was very much a part of the tenets of democracy. With this, I will close, and I will say thanks to Socrates for the history of philosophy. Thanks to Socrates for an example of a guru or great teacher. In 2,000 years, well, really 480 years before the birth of Christ that paved the way. And some people look at him as great as Jesus, actually, fathering democracy at that time. Okay, good evening. Bye now.